So over the past 15 years, we've had like the blessing and curse of trying to make a complete trip happen. I feel like most years we have one or two days of good fishing and then it kind of shuts down. And then you look back at the whole week and you realize maybe four, five <laughs> hours of the entire trip was actually really good fishing. The rest of it was just working your ass off, trying to make something happen that normally didn't. Oh my God. And I think there's always been this dream, for us at least, to do a complete trip, to have every single day, not go our way, because you can't control that in fishing, but you know what I'm saying, like... Yeah, you just want the opportunity to at least see what you came there to, to, to see. I feel like you book, you know, four days to expect two good days, you know, normally when you do a weekend trip or something. But with a week-long trip, you got seven days to make something happen. You just want to at least see something that you came there for. Like, we've had, the, again, the blessing of traveling since we were young, but we had it, we were doing these really terrible, awful budgets and seeing like how far we can stretch them. And so every chip, something went wrong. <laughs> I get to change my underwear. All right, now a five hour car ride, an hour and a half boat ride. Hey! Roll tide. And we never had one that was complete. And so I think what's really special, and I guess what we're really excited to kind of show off is, you know, that we we did this. We had seven days that are filled to the brim. And, you know, we did it in an area of Mexico where every day is different. A part journey <laughs> to this trip. Crew of eight people. Yeah. Three different fishing crews, five or six different cameras. See what happens. Yeah. It's great now, like in retrospect, because I'm not jinxing it. Because <laughs> I know, I know we have the goods. Looking back over the past 15 years, we have a ton of losses, not a lot of wins. Yep. But we're like learning and learning and learning. Still and learning. Still learning. Which I think it's weird to think that 15 years of doing basically do-it-yourself trips takes you 15 years until you finally play up. And yeah, notch that. It took us 15 years to even halfway figure it out, and we're yeah. still only halfway there. Yeah. Puts that into perspective of how long it takes to actually get good at something. So, this all started right on a bad Hemingway bet. It was uh, <laughs> fall of uh, 2008. Yep. I was right. playing football at Ole Miss. Came down for a little visitation. I, I hadn't made the travel roster, but I wanted to come in. And so, what, it's 2 a.m.? I think, mm -hmm. what was your famous line? I don't know, we just kept talking about going fishing somewhere and we we're like, well, we can go bone fishing or we go offshore, blue water. I was like, why can't we do everything? Why can't we, <laughs> why can't we do it all? I want to catch a bone fish and a rooster fish in the same place. <laughs> You're like, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure that's uh, viable. <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. Geographically, I don't think that exists. <laughs> all we've seen was Orange Beach, Alabama, basically. So uh, we decided to make it a little more of a send. Yeah. And then my just disrespectful self had the audacity to call you on a flip phone the next morning. Yeah, you know when you make bets that you really don't want to actually do, the next day you're like, wait, did I actually say that? Well, here we go. I guess we're doing it. I think for me, like, I had always dreamed of traveling the world. I was just like, but I didn't think, I mean, again, we grew up, both grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. That's just not what people talk about. Like, you have your truck. You know, you may go to the bass pond, you may go to the deer stand, but like traveling the world, that's like for elites. Like you don't, you, nobody gets to do that. And then, I don't know, I think there's something that you like set fire to that night. And I woke up the next day and I was just like, why the hell wouldn't we? Yeah, like, it wasn't like, that outlandish of a request when you think about it. We started breaking it down and it's like, hey, we can find a cheap flight. Yeah. We can actually get down somewhere national pretty cheap, probably cheaper than what we could do domestically for sure. And that's when we're like, okay, maybe we can actually do this. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to think about it because we basically went and like tried to call each other's bluff at every moment that first year. Okay, 
flights are 200 bucks to Belize. Okay, so that's not gonna stand in our way. Well, the lodging, you can't afford lodging. And then I was like, well, here's a $90 beachside hotel. And so really, really quickly it was like, okay, so we could do this trip by like mowing yards. And we figured that like by cutting a little bit of money out every month, oh, you were pretty close. Yep. You know, you were pretty close. I don't know if you remember, I sure remember back then, you weren't a big fly fisherman yourself. I was not. Why make it harder than it already is, right? <laughs> and then just looking at you casting and like throwing this little buggy whip around, this tiny little reel handle. I was like, what, what's the point of that? Why would you do that? And I think that's actually one of the first things we learned over these trips is that we learned to fall in love with fly fishing, not because it was a superior technique, because yep. it's not. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not a superior technique, but it's that it embraces that kind of sporting, hunting, pursuit that I think we all really enjoyed. I stuck my first bonefish down there on that trip. And I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> Still difficult, but I got it. I, I think your words were, I'm not gonna do this a lot, but I get it in this context. Yeah. We walked away from that trip, and I think a lot of us, mainly friends and family, were like, well, that was great. That was a great once in a lifetime trip. You've checked it off. That's great. And we just doubled down. The next year we were like, if we did it once, why can't we, why do, it can't we do it again? And so we went to Trinidad and Tobago. Now that was more of a cost consideration. We had gone and done do it ourselves fly fishing and spin fishing. And we thought that was, we felt like, you know, one DIY fish was worth seven guide fish. Yeah. And so we were like, let's, let's do this. And I think that's the first time, right? We got really just pummeled. We had gotten skunked for three days in a row. Tried to go DIY the whole time, yeah, didn't we? We thought we were going to do DIY because someone had wrote, written a book and we were like, oh, we got this. We're Bama boys. We'll figure this out. Rented a car and just drove up the coast, yeah. hitting random bays, throwing poppers and whatever else. But then, yeah, out of desperation, we called a local guide and, and then had a really great experience. <laughs> Actually, I think that's a funny memory. You, uh, you got a live mount from that trip. Yeah, first ever. <laughs> was it my first turpin ever? To be fair, it was a 55 pound fish and we thought it was big. We I was trying was to huge. save cash, okay, by the inch. <laughs> didn't want to, not a big one, it's not worth it. We thought it was a big fish. Yeah. And I'll never forget that next winter. We sent that picture of your lime mount to Kester via email. <laughs> but he's like, that's cute. That's a baby. <laughs> that's a, it's, he's like, why did you get a lime mount of a baby tarpon? And we were like, dude, what are you talking about? And he was like, Meet me in Trinidad and I'll show you real fish. So you guys want to catch the big ones, let's go to Trinidad. And that's where Kai and Sasha kind of joined the crew. Yeah. They both weren't big fishermen at all. What you guys? Bird. Yeah. Everybody hooked up. Triple hookup. Some might say still or not. Mm -mm. But they want. They said, let's come along for the ride. Yeah, they were like, I want to travel internationally and you're doing fishing, you're doing adventure, let's go. And, um, and I remember like that's when we got introduced to Kai's luck. You know, the first fish he caught in salt water was like a... Keep on doing the same thing, Kai. Oh, 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 oh. God. 170 pound tarpon. Oh, 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 oh. That's bigger than me. We can tell, because he's been kicking your ass. And just was like, is this it? Is it this isn't that hard. And we were like, cool, man. Bitch. Kai Martin. Kai Martin always got the luck and, but I mean, I think that trip, you know, kind of started to lay some of the groundwork where we were like, okay, we need to have great local knowledge to know what the heck we're doing because we want to catch fish. But then also like we did take a couple trips out into what they would call the bush up north uh, and try to find new spots. And then, you know, if you've done it three times. Keep it going. You got to do it four. And so we, and we started try, trying to find new locations. We're like, let's go somewhere new. Mm -hmm. So it's somewhere that's got awesome culture, great food, awesome fishing that's accessible that we can actually get to on our price range. Yeah. Yeah, we'd heard about Baja. We knew it was a cool place to, to get down to and heard about the roosters on the beach running down the man, that whole deal. And we're like, yeah, we could do that. Easy enough. That's kind of what we do anyways down on our coast. You just run down the beach and look for something and throw at it. 
What's the difference between a rooster fish and a ladyfish? Yeah. Like, come on. Same idea. <laughs> we were humbled real quick on that trip. Dead days. Yeah. Where we weren't catching fish, we weren't trying, well, I won't put that on our guide, but it didn't appear that we were trying to catch fish. Mm -hmm. um, and we were like, okay, we've got to kind of reevaluate what we're doing. Like, we've got to... Well, you realize just because you go somewhere that's not your home country, your home fishery, it sounds like this awesome mythical land where fish just jump in your boat. You actually still got to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy just because you go international. It's yeah. still fishing. In number five, we went to Exuma thinking we could do another DIY trip. We like bonefish and we said, let's focus a little more on fly fishing and see if we can figure it out ourselves. Looked at the, the guide prices in the Bahamas did not exactly add up <laughs> with our budget. So we found a Airbnb with a guy who had a little Boston whaler in the back and we said we could use it. We said, well, we've been on boats before. We, you know, fish, we could figure this out. We didn't know anything about tides, right time to fish, how to go after these fish, but we just took the boat out and looked for a flat and started walking. Got humbled again real quick. We found a few good fish. Um, and then we realized gas gauges and bilge pumps are pretty important on boats. Yeah, and end up, you know, getting marooned on an island with no boat, power, no nothing, like no way to get back. going on 13 hours now, stranded on our island. And we were like, okay, well, you know, guides matter. <laughs> yeah, some local knowledge <laughs> makes a difference. Real Ted. And then uh, we're like, hey, y'all wanna go to the jungle of Panama and kayak fish for yellowfin tuna and Kibera snapper? Dip! Yeah! <laughs> Uh, yep. <laughs> well, I mean, that's my favorite part. So you and I were like, here's all the details. Here's all the, like, we can make this happen. It's gonna be like, so intense. Like, we got this. And again, we went with, with Ty and Sasha fishing. They were like, dude, oh, it's an adventure. Yeah. Salt water, there's jungle, sign me up. We had this wonderful spirits in the, in the jungles of Panama there. And we were like, that was really hard. That was a lot of work. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So maybe we should have somewhere something where we have a little more control over. These are still footballs. And they just kicked our ass. So we're like, okay, we're gonna go back to Baja and we're gonna do it right. We're gonna go with one of the validated family guides down there. <laughs> Got him? How to baby Kai? We're gonna stay at a good house. We're gonna get the ATVs we need to get after rooster fish, and and that was like. A trip that got us closer, I think, to the to, to the complete trip, right? Yeah. Like there was one day where we saw rooster fish on the beach, you know, didn't connect, but like we learned a little bit and kind of moved forward. Um, you know, I caught a couple baby roosties from the beach and, and I think it was the last day there, we got into a school of feeding rooster fish. So we weren't on the beach like the, like the holy grail of it all, but we were in a boat and got to see some of that magic. Yep. And so like, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning. And then sometimes you get blessings from above. Some of the laws changed on visiting Cuba in 2016. 2016. Obviously, Cuba's an incredible place and that was a, a great trip too, but just a little different than what we're used to. Yeah, we were, we were threading the need, this impossible needle on between what was legal and what was affordable. Just, yeah, um, how do we get down to Cuba? Yeah, and so we were like, now's our chance to go. And so we went and did it. Um, and again, it, inching closer to a complete trip. Culturally. <laughs> Immersively crazy good. Yep. One of the best experiences we've ever had. Fishing at points was the, the stupidest we've ever seen, you know? Yeah, and one of the prettiest, pristine areas where we fished, the flats were incredible. Yeah. Just very well taken care of fishery, obviously, and not super pressured. But, but then sometimes the guides would take us out to go deep dredge random holes for tarpon, and like, this is fly fishing. You're like, 
no, bro, like we should be spin fishing. Like yeah. this is this is where tar this is where fly rods suck. So let's just own it and say it's time for a spin rod. Like you're 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 phoning it in, and it's okay, but it it kind of goes back to this idea. It wasn't a complete trip. And I think that's the trip that the group really started honing in on the fly fishing side of things, and we started saying, okay, maybe we should make our trips more built around <laughs> fly fishing versus spin. And that's when I think a lot of us started catching the bug and looking at new locations from that point of where can we go and have a really awesome fly fishing experience. And by the crew, you mean you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you and Kai. Kai also, he invested in a lot of gear that trip. Starting to get our sea legs, knowing that what we wanna do is going to have this intense fishing focus, but also it's gotta have this cultural backbone to it that, that we want, um, again, going after that complete trip. And you were like, hey, I found a place on Google Maps in the middle of the Colombian jungle. And my, I was like, no, immediately, no, <laughs> just stop. And that's when our good friend Daniel jumps on board. We see that, and now I have to get out of bed tomorrow. Now I have to come find that fish, and I gotta catch that fish. That's right, we finally got him on a trip. We're trying to do it probably since college. But I think you and Dan talked me into it, like, no, this place has been fished by you know, local Colombians and Ecuadorians and tourists for a long time. It's a stable location, it's safe. You know, we did all the state department warnings to make sure we weren't crazy. And, um, and we went down to a little wood shack on the beach. It was beautiful. And, and that, then, then we had like some Nat Geo moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wild experience to see that. Talk about getting on a trip, getting on a boat, and 30 minutes in, all of a sudden it's chaos. Usually takes us three or four days to see anything respectable. And, uh, and then you blink and you're like, oh, we've done it 10 times. Yeah. I got a little scent of me until. <laughs> and I was like, man, we got to go back to Belize. That's right. We've done all the cool stuff. The homecoming decade. Yeah, we've, we've, we've got to go back to where it all started. And um, and that's actually where we got to learn how to start to put together you know, films for, for these things. We had yeah. Ben Fields jump on board, who was just egregiously gracious with his time, suffered through sunburns and vomiting and all the things. And then he got the bug. Like that was kind of fun. Like he got the bug of like, oh, not only are there cool stories wrapped up in these trips, but like this style of fishing is very cool. Brought one of my buddies from Knoxville, Tommy. Come on. Get a video of that right there. Who was maybe a better fly fisherman than all of us combined. <laughs> I don't know if I'll give him that much credit, but he knew his stuff and yeah. he had never gotten to do the destination stuff. And so he just ate it up because right. we designed that trip. It was probably the coolest design trip we've ever done. Um, we went out to an atoll in the middle of the Belizean Sea. We went into the permit capital of Belize. South Belize. Got humbled and then, you know, capped it all off with, with Ambergris Key where we had been 10 years before. Yep. Uh, and so came back from that one. It was good. It was sentimental. We put a film together that we thought, you know, was next level. And
got a little humbled. Um, Getting well, we humbled is a theme of is this. It's a dead theme. <laughs> Keep on saying sea legs, but I think we we're like, okay, now we know what, what we're about. What to do and what not to do at what least. What not to do and how to go about it. So then we were like, okay, we got the cameras, we got the crew, we know what a good trip looks like. Let's go back and figure out Columbia. And we tried to implement more fly to this trip. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not necessarily fly friendly, we said we're gonna do it anyways. Talking about like getting our sea legs on, that trip was like, we are starting to figure this out. Like yep. be around good people, be in a beautiful location, pad yourself so when the fishing sucks, you can still feel good about it. Even if you don't have a complete trip, you can feel good about it because you're around great things. And, and that's what we had. And it was fun like trying to <laughs> teach Nelson and Cholo like, yeah, we want to do fly fishing. And they're like, but it's not effective. And we're like, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> Muy difícil. <laughs> It was a good experience, right? We looked, linked up with some guys that we adore down there. Nelson and Cholo. I think so. Whom we adore. Yeah. Um, and Harold. And Harold, the saint himself. And just, and, and leaned into, you know, a part like we found this eco hotel on the beach in the middle of the jungle mm -hmm. um, called Makana Eco Lodge. It's run by Luisa and all these just, just jewels of people. And like, so we got a kind of a different sense of like, fun from that trip because like we saw the guides learning why we like to fly fish. It's not that it's more effective than spin fishing in situations. It's just, just a little more, a little more pursuit to it. And then we did, a, you know, what's actually, it sounds like a kind of a typical thing. The next year we were like, okay, yeah. It's too, new, too good not to do it again. Because again, we were with great guides, great people, great food. Um, and that's where, you know, we got to see Dan, our dear friend Daniel, cast into ah, hundreds and hundreds of- The origin of Dan's pain. Got it. From an odd angle, that one, that trip holds a special place for me because we roped in my brother at the last second and we were like, hey Dave, we need help, you know, running cameras. Do you think you can figure out video? And he was like, oh, hey, Dave, I we need somebody to tuck to for seven days. Are you interested? In <laughs> and he was like, oh, I get to go to Colombia and stay in the jungle, say no more. And there was just moments that really lucked out. Like when Dan was at his worst, <laughs> David would forget to cut. And so that film, like he was just filming the entire time of Dan just sulking, <laughs> just messing up. Um, he's gonna jump, he's gonna jump. It'll be right, right there if it does. Over those waves. Woo! Dan! Oh, meta, meta, póngalo ahí, medio, medio agua. One of the more difficult trips we had to do for sure from a fishing aspect, but paid off. It was like, it was one of those weird things like when you notch the tuna on the fly, you're like, yep, that was really cool. Give me the spin rod. Don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I got that, got the t-shirt. Yeah, I don't want to do that. And I, and I think that's for our crew. Like we're not wholly about the fly fishing thing. We enjoy it. We absolutely adore it. We love it. But it's like, we know the context where it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Where, I mean, we know when it's a, when it's a hard thing, and yeah, the best anglers and guides are guys that can do it all, in any condition, any style of fishing, whether it's spin, conventional, fly fishing, and yeah, if you get to a holy for yourself and say, "Oh, I'm only going to catch this on the fly," it's like, I don't know, kind of missing the whole point. Too. Yeah, you know. Two years ago. There go. No, 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 no.
found a place where we could do, in our words, right, the poor man Seychelles. Yeah. Like walking down the beach for bonefish, permit, and jacks. But I think you and I, I remember when we went to Baja, we were like, dude, if there was a Baja that existed that had bonefish and permit and tarpon, mm -hmm. we might never leave. Yeah. And we, we knew that place didn't exist. Where can we get a Airbnb on the water that's got fishing right out your front doorstep that gives you diversity and different styles of fishing you could do? Where does that place exist? And we found Mexico. Wings up with the best guy we've ever been with. You know, the, I like to call him a player's coach, right? He's on the real now. He's got a good. He's got a good bend on that rod. We're gonna bow now. Oh! Okay. He's so excited, and he doesn't want you to miss out on it. Well spotted, sir. That he's gonna eat that. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Come on, eat it. Like I know, like a lot of like saltwater guys yell at you because they're better than you. Yeah. Nick will yell at you because he's so excited and he doesn't want you to miss out on this fish. But yeah, we were exposed to just really cool types of fishing we didn't know were possible. Tarpon on poppers. Yep. Permit on the beach. Mm -hmm. I mean, bonefish in the waves, surfing like they're dang rooster fish. Like all these things that I would like to dream that were true were, and we had the cultural stuff, which we love, the natural beauty that we cared about, a crew that was ride or die about it. Tacos. Tacos on tacos on tacos. Al pastor. And so that sets us up for this year. It was like, we were so close last year to what we would call a complete trip. Like it, it was all there. And I think as we've you know talked and like learned, like sometimes you gotta go back yeah. and, and learn, <clears throat> improve. So I guess that's where we dive in. It's like, so day one, George, you want to tell us why we're not in an uh, airplane we right now? We don't have time for this. We need to freaking go. Where are we going to drive to? Atlanta, let's go. Okay. <laughs> we get there. This is stupid. <laughs> this truck's also not going to make it there. Oil change, tire pressure sense, misfiring. It'll be fine. <laughs> This train is I go, he was like, he's kind of solo. And I was like, is that the only place I can park? He's like, yes. Okay, I'm gonna go there. Go there, full. He said, covered parking was still not full. So I was like, how do I get into covered parking? They were all blocked. So I was like, well, reserve. I'm gonna go park at a hotel, get my truck towed, and get a uh, Uber. How you boys like margaritas? How we doing? Movies. Well, we made it. Yeah. Freaking disaster. Yeah. I'm glad I was gonna suggest y'all hop in the car, but I was thinking like cut it close. This is the last thing I wanted to do. Look at these guys. Welcome to Atlanta popped up on the thing. I was like, oh, oh that's gotta be that. I got up at 3.15. I'm feeling great. George, how many? How much sleep did you get? Ha! <laughs> LOL. I, wait, so that means the guy with the newborn, I got the most sleep. I went to bed. I got like five or six. And I slept till 5.45. I, I'm right there with you. So, with two, the two yeah. tired. So we started the day with the text from Delta that like our connection's not gonna work. So what, in 10 minutes, Kai, we make the decision that we're gonna jump in the car and drive to Atlanta. And then, then Kai, the best fisherman there is. <laughs> I'm doing well. Oh,